Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I've been living in Korea for one month now as a KGSP scholar for the undergraduate program 2020. My name is Jenny and I'm a foreigner here. Since I got this scholarship, I've been also getting many questions from different applicants that are curious to know more about this scholarship. So. I made a compilation of some of the most frequently asked questions and some that I think are very interesting topics to talk about. Uh, so I can share here with you all of my experiences and hopefully this is helpful for all of you future applicants. If there's anything else you want to know which is not being covered in this video, you can send me an email here with all of your questions and maybe we will have a part two. Now, without further ado, Let's get started. It's Q&A time. Question number one comes from Sharon Kelvin. Do they pay for your dorm in the Korean language institution in undergraduate university or it comes from your monthly stipend? Yes, they do pay for your dorm, but it is included in your monthly stipend. If you are an undergraduate, it may vary for next year, but as of right now, we have 900,000 won per month. From that, we get automatically deducted the amount for the dorm and then we get deposit on our card or bank account actually, the rest. Question number two, can you select what type of housing you will get or is it given to you randomly? Well, it depends if you are on the Korean language institution university or if you're on the university where you're going to do your undergraduate program. Here, on the first year, you cannot select your dorm. It is assigned to you. You don't have a say in it. Uh, you cannot stay outside either, so you always have to stay uh, on campus. And you don't get to choose what type of dorm you will get. It is a lot cheaper, and all of the documentation and the application process is dealt with, which is very convenient. But on the downside, you will not get to pick what type of dorm you get. Now. On the other university, you can select what type of dorm you will get because you have to apply yourself, but you can also stay outside of campus if you want. You can go to Goshen one or rent an apartment, whatever suits you, uh, but you have to be mindful of the score you get on your topic exam. You have to uh, get a certain level, I don't know if it's level 5 or something like that, I'm not sure, uh, to be to be able to go outside. If not, you will have to stay on campus and it, sometimes it also depends on the university itself whether they will let you or not. Last question from this person is, do they need the grade script from grade 10 to 12 or just grade 12? What you need to present is the graduation certificate depending on the country you're from. Uh, it may vary whether it is the same as the grade script or if it is a different and separate document. Uh, but that is what you need as proof that you have completed high school. However, you will also see on the application that you have to fill in that you need to state what GPA you got for 10th, 11th and 12th grade. So it is also recommended for you to attach uh, the grade script from grade 10 so you get proof of what you have stated for your grades. Now, bot Karen123 asks, I'm 23 years old, turning 24 this October, so this will be the last chance I have to apply for the undergraduate program. Do they pay a lot of attention to your age when applying? So, in my case, I was 23 at the time of applying too. I have just turned 24 here on March actually I will be 25 by Korean age standards so I would say it is a lot harder to get the scholarship but as you can see it's not impossible this year actually uh, that I know of there's over 10 people who are 23 or older from different countries when I did uh, get a consultation before applying that was also one of the questions I asked the lady there in the embassy and she told me that 
yes, they do give preference to those who are fresh out of high school and a lot younger, but at the end of the day, really, what it matters is if you are a good and prepared candidate. If you have good grades, if you have participated in different activities, volunteer work, um, if you have uh, different courses or activities that you have also participated on, uh, if you are learning Korean or you already know the language, if you know any other language, anything really will make a difference. And on the way you carry yourself on the interview as well. I believe personally that most of the younger candidates tend to be a lot more nervous on the interview day. Uh, so being older actually gives you a little bit more experience and in my opinion you can manage those situations a lot better. But since you are 23 or older maybe, I assume you have, as it happened to me, your job or you're already in university or some other responsibilities back at home. So you really need to consider whether this is really something you want and something that you're willing to risk and leave behind everything you have in your life right now for or not. If that is the case, if you're really sure this is for you and you are prepared, go for it. As I mentioned, it may be a little bit harder, but it's not impossible. If I could do it, you can do it too, so best of luck. Next questions. I have a lot of questions actually from this person, Valen Cho. Um, she says, how long does it take for the embassy to announce the results and for you to find out if you've been selected? Right now, we are far from the date of applying and getting the results and everything, but I can tell you that those are the most stressful times. You have to wait for the embassy uh, for the confirmation, then you have to wait for the NNID for the confirmation, then you have to wait for the university and see whether they accept you or not. If more than one do, you have to select the one, and it's a lot of waiting. And let me tell you, this is the worst part, at least it was for me. In the case of the first round, which is embassy, if that is the one you're going through, uh, it says that it will take around one week for the results to come out. In my case, they notified me on the same day, but it depends on the country, it depends on the amount of candidates that they have, it depends on a lot of things really so I cannot assure it will be a specific time I've also heard from other applicants that it took a little bit longer in the worst case scenario two weeks but longer than that I'm not sure it will be and as I mentioned it happened to me that it was on the same day so really that is the time frame where you will be expected to know about it so if it's not on the first couple of days don't worry you may actually Selected, just keep calm, keep waiting, and then you'll get the answer. What languages do you know? What was your GPA and what extracurricular activities you participated? So, first, what languages do I know? I speak Spanish, English, as you can see, and Korean. My Korean at the time of applying was not very advanced, I was just completing. Um, my third semester on Sejong Institute in my country so I would say I will say it was around a basic level but on the interview they did ask some questions in Korean and I think they really value if you can give them a proper answer and if they see that you're willing to try even if you don't know uh, to understand more if they see that you are engaged in trying to learn more about the language the culture and everything really better insertion uh, into Korean society. Now, GPA, um, I don't really remember. I think it was 3.6 in the 4.0 um, scale. So, not so bad, not perfect, but rather good on the good scheme of things. I don't, I don't know, you can judge for yourself. Uh, and about extracurricular activities. I have participated in a lot of them. Since a very young age, my mother has enrolled me in everything she could. So I did drawing, um, arts and crafts, piano, music theory. Then when I was older, I took photography class, graphic design, um, film, and 
video uh, and many other things well the language is of course and some other things here and there um, so that is actually very helpful too in my case i'm going to study visual communication design so when they saw that most of the things i've done uh, as far as courses and other things go are related to the major they were also very interested in that so anything you have participated on uh, any volunteer work i also did many years of volunteer work and they were really interested in that too so anything any course or anything you have participated on or joined uh, during the years it will really help you so keep that in mind any tip to be selected by the embassy i think that's a rather subjective question so i can't really tell you what they're looking for because it depends as i mentioned on many factors on your country on the amount of applicants they have on the different areas or the different majors each applicant is going to apply to uh, your age your background everything but i think the biggest advice i can give you is be sure this is what you really want and know the reason why you're coming here i don't mean to say this uh, to offend anybody but if you're coming here because you like k-dramas or k-pop or whatever that is not really a good reason because even though you will be surrounded by korean culture there's more on this scholarship than just being in korea you will be here to study to create a future for yourself to think about your career and what you want to do with your life so my advice is get your priorities in check know your why and then follow through with this if this is what you really want and if that is the case and you're prepared you will definitely get it what was the first thing that you prepared um in my case i knew about the scholarship on september the first time uh, and I was already late <laughs> for applying that year so I had an entire year to prepare all of the documents because I already knew I wanted to apply and I already knew what I needed what I started with was the personal statement and the study plan those are a really strong piece of your presentation and of your application I cannot stress this enough they really pay every single word you write on it they will ask you questions about that is the only thing they know about you other than your grades and the things you have studied so really take your time preparing those write um, in a professional way meaning you're not writing an email or chatting with a friend if english is not your first language i'm not saying just ask for someone else to do it try to do it yourself because you need to present it in a way that is personal, in a way that you're proud of what you've written, in a way that you know how to say things better, but it needs to be written cohesively, uh, no spelling mistakes, and it needs to be professional and well presented. So if that is the case, ask your friend or take it to a translator or someone you know you can trust to have it Advised. really take your time on those what are you going to study in what universities did you apply to as I mentioned I'm going to study visual communication design and the three universities that I applied to are Seoul National University, Yuhua Women's University and Incheon National University uh, those three are not the best in the design field I mean they're not bad universities at all Actually, Seoul National University is one of the top three universities in the country. But one thing that I was prioritizing over other things is that um, for me, it was really important for the school to have a swimming pool and maybe a swimming team because I was part of a swimming team back home and I really enjoyed that. So I wanted to have uh, something to do here uh, that will keep me sane, focused, me relax and also keep my health in check so that's why 
chose those three and the one that I'm going to study is Iwa Women's University next year. How much did it cost to apply? Again, this may vary person to person, country to country, because all of the documents need to be presented either or Korean or in English. If your country does not speak English or of course Korean as may not be the case um, anywhere else other than here, you will need to have everything translated and that will add up a lot. In my case, um, I spent around $350 to $400 on everything and with that I mean all of the documents, legalizations, translations that I had to present for the first round as well as the passport and all of the medical examinations that I needed for the third round. I would be really better know which one it is. You have to present all that, you need an x-ray, you need blood work done, you need a lot of things. Um, so yeah, around 350, 400, that was for all of the things prior coming to Korea that I had to pay for. So for some of you, it might be a little less, for some of you maybe a little more. So it is an investment. So really keep in mind why you're doing this, what are your reasons, if you're really prepared, if this is the correct time, and if so, best of luck. And last question, well, this is not really a question, but just help me write my personal statement and study plan. Well, for the personal statement, I started with an introduction, then the main body, which consisted, I believe, of two different paragraphs, and then the conclusion. For the introduction, I just mentioned briefly why I wanted to come to Korea to study and what I expected uh, in this experience. Then, on the main body, I elaborated about the reason why I wanted to come here, why I thought I was prepared, all of the different activities I participated on, all of the different um, achievements that I had uh, about my volunteer work, about my interests and how I got to know about Korea and Korean culture, why is that I like it, so on and so forth. And then on the conclusion, reiterate again why I thought that I was the right candidate for them to choose and what I was um, going to give from my side uh, to make this possible and to really take advantage of this opportunity if they did decide to give me the scholarship. Now, as for the study plan, it was around the same structure. I just mentioned what I wanted to study, why, how I got into it, and what I've done to prepare myself for it, um, what I wanted to uh, study in the future, what I expected to have in university, uh, what I anticipated some of the obstacles would be, and how I planned on overcoming each one of those. Um, then just mention again why I chose to apply to this scholarship, why I think it's the best option for me, and what um, I wanted to do with my career, what meaningful impact I wanted to have on the people around me, on society, on the country that I'm from, if I plan on coming back or whatever. Uh, try to say, what is your plan? Why you want to do this? And what you expect to be able to achieve and to be able to do what you will have in the future. I didn't ask anybody to send me their personal statement or study plan because I think that's very unprofessional because they're asking for your personal uh, experiences so you don't really need anybody else to tell you how to do it. If you do want some examples or things you can read as a kickstarter for your sentences uh, and what you could write about I found a very useful website which I will link down below in the description if you want to check it out. And again, if you have any other questions um, that I haven't talked about in this video, just drop it here in this email. And if you like the video, please like it and share it with other people so this can be helpful for 
all of those of you who are going to apply next year. If you happen to be new, you can subscribe. And thank you to all of you who have already sent in your questions. Uh, I hope this was helpful and I answered everything you were curious to know. So I will see you in the next one. Bye!